from the other side of the footlights, here is WHRO FM critic M.D. Rich. The dazzling Virginia Symphony program at the Ferguson March 3rd was called Pictures at a French Exhibition, in which music by Claude Debussy, Camille Saint-Saëns, and Albert Roussel created a dream world of clouds and demigods. The evening began with Debussy's innovative symphonic poem, Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. Debussy's inspiration for the music was Stéphane Mallarmé's poem about a fawn dreaming of the conquest of nymphs. This fawn was definitely not a Disney Bambi, but a mythological demigod, half man and half goat. Made into a short ballet, choreographed and danced by Václav Nijinsky, it was considered extremely shocking at the time. Deborah Wendell Cross's solo flute set the simple but unforgettable opening theme, an odd descending and reascending scale, followed by swelling phrases for strings and harps that kept rising and falling, blending together airily. Concertmaster Von Armstrong's lovely sweet violin solo and Rob Cross's pristine percussion rose from the orchestra and fell back into it, all under Joanne Folletta's graceful conducting. Israeli pianist Alan Goldstein was the soloist for Sanson's challenging Concerto No. 2 in G minor. Goldstein described it as from Bach to Offenbach, referring to the work's progression from oratoric church-like opening to passionate first movement and cheerful tarantella ending, but said his favorite is the second movement. It's lighthearted, a dialogue back and forth with the orchestra, very tricky and fun to play. The conversation between orchestra and the piano creates drama. Asked if he had a favorite composer, he replied, on March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, my favorite will be Saint-Saëns, and adds, if it's not my favorite, why would I do it? After his brief introductory remarks, he sat down and launched into the concerto. Boom! He brought out the strong bass clearly, but without banging. The orchestra echoed phrases like an amen ascent. The light and playful phrases demonstrated remarkable clarity of articulation, even when his hands and fingers were moving so fast they seemed to blur. The left hand rippled, then turned dramatic. Playing from memory, at times his eyes would close, and he became the music. The second movement began with a rumble of timpani, and a skipping, light-hearted, wonderful melody went from orchestral voice to voice. Goldstein had a terrific combination of delicacy and power, yet even at speed his hands were relaxed, even when crashing big bass chords. It was extraordinary. The audience was cheering as he returned for an encore by Argentinian composer Alberto Ginastera. Provura bass moving up to a melodic center with interesting, subtle rhythmic variations, all at blinding speed, ending in glissando zooming up and down the keyboard. Good thing he was playing from memory. No way did he have time to turn pages. After the interval came Debussy's Nocturnes, whose three movements of musical light and shade were inspired by a series of contemporary paintings by James McNeil Whistler. The first, Clouds, a delicate intensity, led by Beverly Kane Baker's viola, and a six-note line that sounded like a quote from Afternoon of a Fawn. The second, Festivals, was bright with brass and percussion. In the third, Sirens, the women of the symphony chorus, seated invisibly behind the orchestra, sang wordless ahs that rose and fell like the tide, beautifully balanced and full. Albert Roussel's Suite No. 2 from Bacchus et Ariadne was developed from his score for a two-act ballet. Ariadne, Princess of Crete, wakes on the island of Naxos to realize that her lover, Theseus, whom she had helped to escape the Minotaur, has abandoned her. She despairs, but the charming wine god Bacchus saves her and marries her. They dance ecstatically, and Ariadne becomes a goddess. The music is by turns stormy, then a cheerful, bright, almost martial air, a skirl of flutes, slashing strings, chugging cellos. Aletta was bouncing up and down in her little wedge boots, calling up Baker's viola solo, Von Armstrong's violin, percussion, dropping into triple rhythm, then back into the joyful main theme. Wonderful. Lloyd DeWitt, curator of the Chrysler Museum, gave a brief, enthusiastic introduction before the concert about the upcoming French exhibit at the museum beginning March 10th, the Paris of Toulouse-Lautrec, with 123 works on paper and one Toulouse-Lautrec painting on loan from the Museum of Modern Art in New York. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge. (laughs) 